Walter to try right now, but I have not been able to get my three. So that is the mission this morning. Try to get three and we out. So hopefully that is the recipe. Hopefully everything works. And uh, we're in and out of here. It's going to be hot today. It's supposed to be hot for this week. So early morning session is the best way to actually get yourself comfortable and enjoy your fishing. Because after that, when everything dies down, nothing but that heat, baby. So anyway, y'all know what time it is. It's fish on, baby. Let's get it. All right, this morning we're going to be doing just a trout session. And I'm going to be using my pen, Fairs 4, along with the uh, seven and a half foot uh, rod, big, big water, ugly stick. Flexible tip, just the way I want it. Uh, 20 pound braid, 20 pound fluoro with the uh, egg drop on top, egg weight on top, slip weight uh, with the swivel along with the uh, floral carbon on the end for my tail. So we're going to be using pinfish and that is going to be the choice of weaponry for today. So making our way down still, it's a good little walk. Got my trail, got my uh, cart, so that makes it a lot easier. The older we get, the smarter we try to get when we go to fishing. You Don't know, just grab our rods and reels like we used to anymore. Just go for it. Now you gotta be smart. Almost there. Let's go, man. Fish on, baby. first trout this morning. Yes, sir. First trout this morning. Bring them on in. Come on up out of here. That's one, baby. At 18, I called it, baby. I called it. 18 inch trout. Nice spec. Alright, y'all. So I'm old school. And I know a lot of people that like to use artificial, and that even goes with the old school uh, fishermen as well. Old school, they use artificial. But me myself, I grew up always using live. I always grew up um, you know, use the cut baits and things like that. I'm from St. Louis, so that's how I fish. Uh, when I went to saltwater, I basically jumped into the mullet, uh, pinfish, things like that. And that was when I was in Virginia. I mean, not Virginia, but actually Florida. Virginia, I was mainly shrimp and crab. And I was using that for the uh, uh, bass, so, uh, sea, uh, saltwater striped bass. And uh, I used to catch down a crab down in Virginia and also in Maryland. Uh, but as I move around, I always use live bait. Um, I've tried artificial and it's a hit and miss for me. I'm more patient with just using live bait or cut bait compared to artificial. Uh, it's just not my technique. But these pinfish that I'm using are great for, um, for what I found out for catching trout. Um, that was something, like I said, I used down in Florida heavily was pinfish. I use pinfish more than I use mullet. And I had better success with it, but when I got down here, it just seemed like I would use it in certain areas and pinfish would just sit there. It'd be like a hit and miss. But I think coming over here to the jetties is probably a big difference. Um, this is the first time I've really used pinfish. I, I, I mean, I'm actually going to clams. Shout out to clams, and I'm buying it from them as far as uh, chasing it. Because I know I can chase it, but I don't feel like doing it. I want to get down here because it's so hot right now. If it was cooler, I'd probably go chase it and say I got enough time to get into some fishing later on whenever I get done. But because it gets so hot so quick, he already has it, so I just go up there and get it from him. And then it's only $5 a dozen, so that's like buying a bag of ice, a uh, bag of chips or something like that. So you can't go wrong, especially when it's grabbing fish. So down here at the jetties, 
It seemed like the pinfish are working like they should. I haven't been uh, let down yet um, as far as what they do. And I mean, that's all I got. That's all I got. No mullet, number pinfish. That's all I'm going with. And it's working. So anyway, y'all know what time it is again. Fish on, baby. Let's get it going. Hey, and real quick to the newbies out there, when you're doing this, and this is something you want to get into, that's a real technique I love doing, man. When you got your line sitting out there in the water and nothing is happening, but you know you haven't seen anything touch it, so if nothing's touched it, more than likely your bait is fine. That means nothing's hit it, so you still got your bait on. Instead of reeling it all the way in and then checking it, just give it a tug. And if you feel weight on the bottom, oh, there we go. I was just explaining that to y'all what I was something I was about to say. Just tug it a little bit, which is what I had did because nothing was happening. So I just decided to go ahead and give it a little tug and try to throw something in front of the fish's face and make them see see action. So that's what I did. So what I'm saying is instead of reeling it all the way in, just tug on it a little bit. Just tug on it a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Another nice trout. Another nice one. But yeah, all I did was nothing was happening. So I just tugged on it a little bit. And as I was explaining that to y'all, it happened. So who knew? <laughs> but anyway, there's number two. Hopefully I can get up out of here. I need one more. Alright, so there you go. That's number two. Let's see what he measures. I give him about a good 17. Right at 17 and a half. 17 and a half, so he goes home. All right, we doing it, baby. Let's get back to having the fun. I love this. They lucky they put out that rule about three. But I swear to God, it used to be five. And it'd be hard to get five. But, you know, now it's three. That it is what it is, so we have to live with it. But it's still fun, so no big deal. I'm not wasting a lot of money. Five dollars, like I say, is all I'm paying for the bait. Or I can go get it myself uh, when it get a little bit cooler. That's probably what I'll start doing. But right now, five dollars can't beat that. So let's get it on, baby. Fish on, baby. Number two. This is my baby right here. The ugly sticks, the big waters. I love them, man. A lot of flexibility with these rods. They're tight. I keep them for years. The eyes and things like that. As long as you get on, clean, you stay on them with some never doll or something like that. Clean them eyes up. You can get all it. What? Get anything off of it. If you get a little rust, uh, like a little face rust or whatever you get on your on it, on it, just take some never doll and wipe it off rods right here man they last a long time as long as you don't get them broken or get them snatched off the wall like i did <laughs> you can hold on to them for a long time See, i just saw somebody hit a mangrove so they're definitely here i just need me one more trout and then i'm gonna fish for the mangroves after that uh with the rest of the pinfish i got left pinfish mangroves love the pinfish i hit a couple yesterday and go for it again this evening i'll right, go for it again this morning just trying to see if i can get one more good healthy trout and then that'll be my uh my limit. This will be my first bag limit if I land one in a while. Last time I did is when I used to be at five. Other than that, I never reached my bag limit. Let's hope today's success. They made it easy, right? Three? That should be easy. <laughs> Alright, sometimes, believe it or not, man, your leader can be a problem. You got, if you're losing line, which I did with this one, my leader got shorter than what I started off with. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it and then add back on the length that I actually had it. It should be like a, this might be already two feet, fast two feet, maybe three feet close to that. Yeah, it is already close to like, uh, close to three feet in length. So that is basically what I started off with. And I want that because I want this bait to be able to have some freedom to swim around. If it's live, I want this, I want my pinfish to have enough freedom to still move around. And uh, if you got a leader that's too short, well, guess what he's gonna do? He's gonna probably tire himself out and then he's just gonna give up and he's gonna realize he has nowhere to go. But if you make it a little longer, that gives him a little more leeway and that can help you as far as uh, keeping your bait alive a little longer and making the fish be attracted to it, right? So gonna retire this and go back to my original length that I had but I did notice the more I lost line it felt like all of a sudden my bait my bite kind of slowed down a little bit and when I was pulling in my pinfish I noticed like this one right here 
Feel like he wore himself out, right? This is the one I had on there earlier. And he wore himself out. You can see the eye popping out and everything. So not to mention that I did have a hit on it, but I don't think it was anything really important. So I'm trying to get this last trout. So gotta, gotta make them ready to get down. Make them want it. Alright, fish on baby. Something went it, something went at that one, but he didn't do anything to it. Except damage it, but he didn't snatch my line at all, whatever it was. Could have been some small ones down there eating it up. These guys eat their own self. Alright, so not a bad morning, y'all. Was able to land two at least. Two nice specs, uh 119, 118, and uh, got those on live pin perch. Uh Carolina rig was the setup, circle three uh hook, and um Everything worked out. I have found slip weight and uh, just went down by the end of the jetty, pretty much cast into the middle. And then I just let it go bottom. Had on probably about a two and a half, three foot liter uh, mon of, a, of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Of oh, the fluorocarbon 20 pound test with a 20 pound test uh, braid. So that worked itself out perfect. My big stick, uh, ugly stick, big water, flexible rod. It gives when the uh, fish crush it, crush the bait. And I was able to uh, get get these two in so with that said just fish on baby y'all be safe out there enjoy your day and uh god bless you